So the first thing we're gonna do is set up the standoffs for the canvas to make sure it's balanced. 90% of working in this composition is prep work. It's all prepping the table and prepping, prepping everything for the resin work, essentially. So I always try to get at least three points on each side because if I only do the ends, the canvas will warp if it's left there like for too long. Got three points on each side and you can tell this drop cloth has had better days, but we're gonna get as many uses out of it as we can. Make sure that the canvas is level on both sides. And most of the time it's not gonna be perfect, but get it as close to perfect as you can. The way this is set up, it's definitely leaning this way a little bit, so it's gonna be running that way. So now that the canvas is on the table, you definitely wanna turn your ventilation on before you get started. You should really wear a mask anytime you're working with resin or any paints for that matter, but uh, to each their own. Next thing I'm gonna do is set up all of my cups that I'm gonna use for the resin. Stir sticks. I always reuse stir sticks because I can, but some of them are better than others. And then get my larger buckets. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by deciding how much resin I'm gonna work with. On this one, I'll probably start with 10 quarts and then go up from there. I pour in the resin and this is a one-to-one -one mix. So I'm gonna go to three and a half quarts. So of resin, first things first, and then three and a half quarts of hardener. But I'm not gonna mix my hardener in just yet. Right now, I'm going to pick what paints I'm gonna use, what colors I'm gonna work with. You're also gonna wanna have standoffs since I have six points. I want six standoffs. So I'm gonna start by base coating the canvas. As you can see, this paint is, uh, is a little thick and messed up, but I can use this as my brush if I want to. It's like playing with clay. Really this part, like finger painting essentially. And even though the canvas is already primed white, I just want to give a little bit of dimension and texture to the, really dimension to the overall piece. You achieve that through layering, including adding base coat. Adding texture with this thick paint to the base coat too. It gives the resin something to uh, kind of like carve through a little bit. Think about like how water moves through a canyon. Kind of just gives the piece more movement instead of just one way or the other way. Definitely invest in a lot of gloves. Lots of gloves. Creating all this texture really adds more than you think to the painting, even though you really won't see any of this in the finished product. It just really adds so much texture that it hides the imperfections in the end. Because resin, if you're trying to make resin look perfect without any bubbles or any dust or any hair in it or whatever else gets in it, insects, yada yada, good luck. My philosophy is just roll with it and allow the imperfections to blend in with the texture like it's intentional. It will save you lots of, lots of headache. Very important to get the sides. A lot of people make these beautiful pieces of art and then they don't finish the sides. Craziness, absolute craziness. 
I like to see all of the drips and all of the, all of the stuff running off the sides because it basically shows that it's an original work of art, something that somebody made with their hands instead of a reproduction or print. So I really like the sides to be finished. So we're getting really close now. I think what I'm gonna do is add in a little bit of white. Some blending going there. I always keep a lot of white paint on hand. And black too. Who needs a paintbrush? Not me. Wanted to add a little, little something there. There's a little bit of glitter, actually. You know, if you're not familiar with what I do, you'll learn very quickly that I like glitter. Glitter makes everything better. Pretty much it for the base coat. We're about to start actually playing with the real stuff. It is still hardener and hopefully it will still work. Quick pro tip, always add the resin into the bucket before the hardener. Definitely always go resin then hardener, not resin, not hardener than resin. When it comes to resin specifically, there's definitely a few basics that you've got to know. First things first, if you're going to be mixing up any significant volume of resin, use a drill and use a paddle bit. You can buy these things, Home Depot, Lowe's. You can find them online too, but definitely use a paddle bit. For the first 10 years of painting, I stirred all my resin by hand. That's a lot of stirring. And then, about six years ago, maybe five years ago, I figured out that I could use a paddle bit and I have not gone back. Some people use a timer. I don't really use a timer, but uh, you know, if you're just getting started, maybe set a timer for two, three minutes max. Probably two minutes is good enough, depending on how fast your drill is set. Make sure you keep the paddle bit down in the resin because if you come up with the paddle bit, it's going to catch air and get a ton of bubbles in it. That's gonna be a total pain when you're trying to get the bubbles out later. You're gonna to have to torch it and use the heat gun for hours essentially. So try to avoid that if you can. One of the last steps in the mixing process is you still wanna use the stir stick. Like I said, this is what I used to use for almost 10 years straight. And then I found the uh, paddle bit and the drill. But after you're done with the paddle bit, it's still a good idea to scrape the sides of the bucket. Just get like two or three good turns, scraping all the sides of the bucket, give it another quick mix. Then I take another bucket, take that other bucket and dump all of this into it. Another pro tip. Definitely, whatever you do, do not scrape any of the resin out of this first bucket. That's how you get hot spots. You don't want hot spots. Your painting will end up sticky. So now, everything that's left in this bucket is perfectly mixed. You've got no hot spots. Keep in mind, all of this stuff I learned through experience, AKA the hard way. Now I'm basically separating it into small batches so I can pre-mix colors. All right, also another thing you're gonna to wanna to keep on hand at all times is 91% rubbing alcohol. You get resin on you or paint on you, throw a little alcohol on it, wipe it off. All right, so start with some blues, get a little bit, throw it in the cup. You don't have to use a lot of paint. 
a little bit of paint goes a long way depending on what kind of paint you're using. I always encourage people to try new things and just experiment with different mediums. Resin is one of the most versatile mediums that I've ever stumbled upon simply because you can mix so many different things into it and get different effects with each medium. Also, it's translucent, so you can see all the layers and uh, I like that. And uh, don't be afraid to mix different colors together. Keep in mind, when you mix different paints into resin, they're not gonna be the exact color that they are before you mix them with resin. One of my favorite things to mix into the resin are raw powdered pigments. So especially like mica-based pigments, alloy-based pigments, all kinds of different pigments. This one has a really thick grain to it. Can you see that in the camera? So this stuff is gonna really catch the light when you mix it in. And I don't know if you can see that, but it's, uh, it's definitely got a twinkle to it, which I like. And again, just like the paints, play around with these, mix in different tones, that's a lot. There's certain combinations of pigments that I just consistently use in my work, like my favorite colors. I definitely have a few different brands and lines of pigments that I gravitate towards, but I'm always trying new things as well. You never know when you're gonna stumble upon something that you haven't seen before, so. But in order to do that, you gotta try new things. So, get a little bit of clear going. You can pre-tint all your resin or you can dump clear on it first and then add your different colors. For me, I just kind of start working. I don't really have any set ideas up front. I just start slinging paint. Once I catch a flow and kind of like really find what direction I want to go with, I kind of let the paint speak to me on where it wants to go. I've noticed that the more I try to make the paint look a certain way, the more it just laughs at me. It's just not the way resin likes to be worked. So you kind of have to let it be the leader. And that's difficult to do when you first start working with it. Resin is a teacher. It will teach you to let go. If you're somebody who's somewhat of a control freak, resin work can be extremely therapeutic in teaching you to let go and just kind of not try to control the outcome of everything. Just let it do its thing. And it might surprise you. It might turn out more beautiful than you thought. It might not, you don't know. Yeah, this, uh, this stuff right here is definitely my favorite. And like, when you see it hit the canvas, you can see how much shine it has, you know? And it definitely makes the piece come to life. You can mix this stuff into, in with any other color too. Kind of let it a little more pop to it. And now, what I'm gonna do is go back to the spray paint. Definitely one of my favorite parts as well. One of my favorite things to do is to work fast with this stuff too. And you have to with resin because you're basically on a timer because once it starts to cure and set, you can't work with it as much. So depending on how much hardener you mix into the resin, you might have an hour to work, you might have 30 minutes to work, you might have a couple hours to work. I like working fast anyway, so kind of gives me a rush in a way. You know what? I don't really want to cover up all of this, so I'm just going to use a little bit of clear. Now you definitely don't have to cover the whole painting with resin. You could do partial coats. But for me on this one, I definitely am going to cover most of, at least most of it. I'll show you a little trick though. If you are gonna do a partial coat, one of my favorite ways to do it is to basically do lines, line work, and then go back and hit it with spray paint on one side. All right, so the whole painting is covered now. 
So now I'm gonna torch it. But before we do that, we need to put it up on standoffs. Remember the standoffs? These guys. And I'll kind of like want it to run this way a little bit at first. Gotta move quick. As you can see, all the edges have been sealed, which is very important. I got just a little bit of resin on me. And now the torch. See all the bubbles? They just come right out. Now the torch also changes the color of the pigment, so you gotta be careful. You definitely don't wanna add too much heat for too long. But you stay on it just long enough to pop the bubbles. And to be clear, you're gonna have to go over it multiple times because the bubbles keep coming up, but after about two or three rounds, they stop. We're going back in and getting these edges really, really good. Especially the bottom lip, you know? All right, more torch work. 